Texas is prepping for the hydrogen wave, and Harvard Business School takes a look at hydrogen scaling costs by 2030. I'll go over all of this on today's Hydrogen Podcast. So the big questions in the energy industry today are, how is hydrogen the primary driving force behind the evolution of energy? Where is capital being deployed for hydrogen projects globally? And where are the best investment opportunities for early adopters who recognize the importance of hydrogen? I will address the critical issues and give you the information you need to deploy capital. Those are the questions that will unlock the potential of hydrogen, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Paul Rodden, and welcome to the Hydrogen Podcast. In an article in the Houston Chronicle on January 7th, Mella McEwen writes, Texas forges ahead in hydrogen development with inaugural council meeting. Texas legislators last year tasked the Railroad Commission with establishing the Texas Hydrogen Production Policy Council to oversee development of the state's hydrogen potential. The agency announced this week it has selected 11 council members to serve alongside Railroad Commission Chairman Christy Craddock. The first meeting was held in mid-December. In a quote from Susan Shiflett, executive director of the Texas Hydrogen Alliance, hydrogen is blowing and going in Texas to say the least. Speaking with the reporter Telegram by telephone, she noted that the representatives of five of her association's members, GTI Energy, Port of Corpus Christi, Chevron, Centerpoint Energy, and Air Liquide are on the council. The goal, she added, is to receive guidance on transporting, distribution, and storage of hydrogen. Under the legislation, House Bill 2847, the council is tasked with making recommendations to the legislature on updates necessary for the oversight and regulation of production, pipeline transportation, and storage of hydrogen. Duties will include developing a state plan for hydrogen production oversight by the commission, analyzing the development of hydrogen industries around the state, and monitoring regional efforts for the application and development of a clean hydrogen hub authorized under the Federal Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Shiflett said the recent selection of the House region for a federal Gulf Coast hydrogen hub with $1.2 billion in federal funding available is just the beginning of hydrogen development in Texas. Multinational majors like ExxonMobil, Chevron, and ConocoPhillips are looking at hydrogen and the effort is also attracting smaller companies and entrepreneurs. Texas has a pipeline infrastructure that can carry hydrogen to Texas ports for export, she also pointed out also stating that she believes hydrogen will be the bridge between the energy of today and the energy of tomorrow. The Permian Basin has a role to play, she also added. Not only is the region home to solar arrays and wind farms that can provide energy needed to produce hydrogen, but oil and gas are sources of hydrogen. She also said everybody likes to use the term energy transition, but she prefers to use the terminology energy expansion. While there are different types of hydrogen, blue, green, and brown, Shiflett said her alliance is all about growing hydrogen energy. She also added her alliance plans to embark on education efforts from rules and regulations regarding hydrogen production, transportation and storage, to training first responders to safely respond to hydrogen-related incidents. Newly appointed council members are Richard Finza from Air Liquide, Preston Kurtz from Air Products and Chemicals, Nigel Genvey from Baker Hughes, Keith Wall from Centerpoint Energy, Ian Lindsay from Chevron New Energies, Angie Murray from Enterprise Products, Scott Anderson from Environmental Defense Fund, Brian Weeks from GTI Energy, Jeffrey Pollock from Port of Corpus Christi Authority, Brian Corgel from the University of Texas, and Kelsey Von Hoos from Williams Companies. Okay, so Texas is on the move actively pursuing hydrogen development, and this should be expected. Much of the clean hydrogen produced in the state doesn't require the 45V to be cost effective and the Gulf Coast is already set up with more than enough infrastructure for export, either as ammonia, methanol, or pure hydrogen. What I want to see develop though is offtake opportunities within the state. And the potential is there with offtakers with heavy CO2 emitting industries, heavy duty transportation, rail, as well as derivatives such as fertilizer, and send fuel utilization. But when hearing this news of super major energy companies pushing for massive growth, don't be surprised when smaller operators are able to set up modular hydrogen units to service local needs. The Houston Chronicle is right. Texas will be the leading state for hydrogen production. What it also needs is to be the leading state for hydrogen use. Next, in an article in the Harvard Business School, 
Desmond Dodd writes, could clean hydrogen become affordable at scale by 2030? Desmond writes, hydrogen is poised to move from the sidelines of global clean energy as the industry learns to produce it more efficiently and at lower cost. This according to newly published research led by Gunther Glink, a climate fellow with Harvard Business School's Institute for the Study of Business in Global Society. Hydrogen is an energy carrier with the potential to power long-haul travel and shipping or energy-intensive manufacturing without producing carbon dioxide emissions. The hitch, expanding hydrogen production, will likely hinge on substantial cost and efficiency improvements. Governments around the world have recently introduced sizable regulatory initiatives and subsidy programs to push companies to develop and manufacture new hydrogen equipment. Policymakers and energy experts see hydrogen as a potentially more reliable decarbonized source that could complement more intermittent power suppliers, such as wind and solar energy installations. The incentives likely will help drive down production costs as industry players overcome steep learning curves, this according to Glink. He predicts that the cost to produce clean hydrogen will start to approach $1 per kilogram by 2030. That's the target the U.S. Department of Energy's Hydrogen Shot initiative has set as part of its mission to accelerate the development of clean energy solutions. The new paper, Advances in Power to Gas Technologies, Cost and Conversion Efficiency, was published in the journal Energy and Environmental Science. Glunk authorized the study with Philip Haller, a doctoral student at the University of Mannheim, and Stefan Reichelstein, a senior fellow at the Precourt Institute of Energy at Stanford University. The study estimates how long it would take to produce large-scale energy at lower cost for different hydrogen technologies. The research is based on the assumption that, with experience, manufacturers and operators of a particular technology learn to become more efficient and reduce costs. Glink Haller and Reichelstein studied the investment expenditures and energy consumption of power-to-gas facilities, which produce hydrogen without emitting greenhouse gases. The research also captured the capacity of power-to-gas facilities commissioned worldwide between 2000 and 2022. Based on this data, the authors project that the life cycle cost of clean hydrogen production will likely fall to a range of $1.60 to $1.90 per kilogram by 2030 from $3 to $5 today. Investors often doubt the ambitious sustainable energy targets that governments and international agencies set in their bids to reach net zero emissions. But this new research shows that industry trends are moving towards the Department of Energy target. One major obstacle for hydrogen, high production costs, have deterred major investments that would meaningfully increase productivity. So far, private investment in the sector mostly has been limited to smaller scale and niche projects. In a quote from Hergen Wolf, Director of Product Management at Germany-based Sunfire GmbH, which is an innovator in hydrogen and alkaline technologies, when it comes to big infrastructure projects like the energy sector, you have to make big investments to really bring down costs. Hydrogen projects planned through 2030 have drawn $320 billion in announced investments, up 35% since 2022, this according to the Belgian-based Hydrogen Council. But fewer than 10% of those projects have committed capital. To be on track to reach net zero in 2050, the council notes, announced investments must more than double and all those projects must launch. It's been difficult to make the business case for large-scale hydrogen production to date, this according to Wolf, because the cost is too high at the outset. 40% to 70% higher than the 2030 cost forecast in the new research to justify upfront expenditure. Therefore, the industry perceives that big investments suffer from first-mover disadvantage. This again according to Wolf, and it's why we need policy support at the beginning to get over this disadvantage. That policy support is starting to help achieve the cost reduction forecast in the paper. For instance, the Year-Old Inflation Reduction Act offers a tax credit for clean hydrogen production of as much as $3 per kilogram, and it's likely to advance the deployment growth of power-to-gas systems. The European Union, home to the highest concentration of announced projects for hydrogen, also is providing incentives to member states to collectively produce 20 million tons of green hydrogen annually by 2030. In October, the U.S. Department of Energy announced that it would spend $7 billion to launch seven regional clean hydrogen hubs across the country. These hubs will create energy ecosystems with a goal of producing commercial-scale hydrogen that's economically viable. In a quote from Glink, 
Once you have deployment at scale, you get cost reductions. With cost reductions, there's more deployment because applications become financially attractive, which then leads again to more deployment and cost reduction. It's a virtuous cycle, Glint said, that can change the game entirely. Okay, so some interesting research from HBS on the declining cost for hydrogen development. Now, while I've covered the 45E and the three pillars several times lately, it is important, as this article demonstrates, the need to keep a global focus on the hydrogen economy. The U.S. had its first unveiling of the potential hurdles that hydrogen operators will need to get over to claim the full $3 per kilogram credit, and Europe has something very similar, just much less restrictive. I would imagine other nations will follow suit to promote clean hydrogen production and will likely come from maybe Australia or Saudi Arabia. And following that, I believe we'll also see the rise of the import-export hub city. Houston being one of those cities, but also London, Amsterdam, Perth, Neom as it gets developed, and others. As that happens, I'll be curious to see if a commodity market follows similar to natural gas spot pricing, or will hydrogen generation be so localized that the geographic dispersion makes that next to impossible? Either way, things are looking up in 2024 for global hydrogen market takeoff, and I am fully on board. All right. That's it for me, everyone. If you have a second, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a good review on whatever platform it is that you listen to. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, whatever it is. That would be a tremendous help to the show. And as always, if you ever have any feedback, you're welcome to email me directly at info at hydrogenpodcast.com. So until next time, keep your eyes up and honor one another. Hey, this is Paul. I hope you liked this podcast. If you did and want to hear more, I'd appreciate it if you would either subscribe to this channel on YouTube or connect with your favorite platform through my website at www.thehydrogenpodcast.com. Thanks for listening. I very much appreciate it. Have a great day.